So what is Deep Fusion? Deep Fusion is designed to use artificial intelligence and other software tricks to improve the sharpness of images by capturing frames of differing exposures and merging them on its own. It produces the highest quality image possible and it works best for medium to low light scenes versus smart HDR in night mode. Now, Apple's marketing chief Phil Schiller says it's computational photography mad science. So let's take a look at these results for both human subjects, food, and landscapes. These were both shot with iPhone 11 Pros. Look at the skin tones, sharpness of the hair. You can tell that identified her face and added more sharpness and detail, better lighting. You see how detailed the right image is versus the left. It looks so soft versus so sharp on the right. The hair strands, they focused in on that. And as we zoom into my face here, notice the lighting on top of my head, how blurry it looks on the left versus the right. These are the same cameras, just with the magical computational photography that they're talking about, deep fusion. Again, with the hair strands here, and also how red I am. Now with food, Let's go into the details of the shininess, kind of on the burger patty, sharpness of the rice. It kind of knows that this is a food image. We try to keep it in medium and low light where possible, and we turned off night mode. Look at the shininess of the curry on the chicken on the right and how soft it is. And this is chocolate popcorn, harder to see. When we zoom in, again, it's a little more detailed, sharper, and shinier on the right. Further examples is curtain, low, medium, light, harder to tell, but we turned off night mode or any other features so the reds are brighter on the right. As we get to the originals here, we're gonna just go into a speed round. Choose which photos you think look better. Again, we explicitly turned off night mode. Now we have all three, the tennis max all the way to the right for reference. And you can see the landscapes, kind of the sharpness of the middle image being the best with a deep fusion update on the 11 Pro. And overall, the Tennis Max still stands on its own, surprisingly. So this could lead to an argument that the Tennis Max photo upgrades aren't worth it all, but you can tell by the light on this one that the photos are consistently the best with the 11 Pro Max and its Deep Pro Fusion update. When you get to daylight, just a head-on-head -head comparison, this gets harder to tell. And I suspect it's because the AI doesn't know what the subject really is. This is an alcohol shop versus faces. So all these photos look virtually similar. Again, there's no UI to turn on or off the AI or see what Apple is actually identifying. But as we get to photos again, and colors of subjects of people, then you start to notice the differences. For now, you just see the same photo, more or less. Finally, you get to the picture and you see the face sharpness, again, highlights on the Deep Fusion Pro and the sharpness of my body. So there you have it, a definitive review of the camera now that the Deep Fusion update just came out this weekend. So all other reviews don't encompass the iPhone to its fullest potential. So now that we got that out of the way, let's go into the rest of the device. I've been thinking a lot about this lately. All these foldable screens, bendable tech, two-in-ones, folded LCDs run the wave of phone revolutions. And the hype is real, foldable screens and all, but I keep coming back to the iPhone iPhone has been working on this form factor for over a decade, literally building the OS from the ground up for one-handed use in thumbs. So this phone isn't going anywhere, even as we forward in this mobile revolution. When real events happened, I had the sense of FOMO when taking real pictures, real videos, to have productivity when I needed it most, when there was no halfway measures. Things like my friends, getting married. We had our DSLR cameras, and as much as we make fun of iPhone for focusing on the camera modules this year and their photo improvements, those were the ones we were sure to take photos of so that we could post it um, on our social media channels. So I just wanted to show you guys first 
this very enjoyable moment, very close moment where we took this photo a little behind the scenes and kind of the output of that to see how it was recorded with the GoPro and what the room looked like versus the enhancements of the iPhone photos. In the iOS 13.2 beta upgrade, in Deep Fusion, just know that there's no user interface to enable it or not. In Samsung's phones, you can see a cursor or a blue orb that shows that Samsung really is um, adding their assists in their AI to analyze the photos and it'll give an analyzation of the scene and you can choose to turn that on or off. In this beta, we didn't have the option so we had to compare the photos and really zoom in to see the details. And I have to say, out of the gate, I'm wondering why Apple didn't include this by default. Because now the photos look even sharper than before when you look really close up. Now, to sum this all up, we also have a photo comparison about the 11 Pro Max versus the Pixel, the Note 10, the S10 Plus, the 10s Max. Okay, time for the all-out war. These are gonna go fast, try and notice the differences, and I'll replay the photos. In the meantime, we have some commentary from our friends. Look at how much, look at how my blue box is in yours. Yeah. I honestly would say you look the most human in this one. <laughs> And then this one here compared to this looks so good. This it has is more out. exposure. This one looks bad. This is the S10. Yours, Miller, I'm not sure. Samsung. Is your screen doing your photo yours justice is though? More, like, I guess. Yeah, yours has is it more shadowing. It's like really light in the background here. And then this one looks this one looks like a really good photo. I don't think your speech is popping into light. And the iPhone 11 Pro versus the Galaxy Fold. Okay, let's go into the cameras. Let's start with the Galaxy Fold, Samsung's most recent flagship released a week ago. Notice the tones on the 11 Pro Max. It lets a little more light in. However, it is a little more yellow. Now, whether that comes out more natural looking versus Samsung's saturation is a preference, but there are times where I do like the boldness of the red colors, of orange colors, of food, of the stylization in the Galaxy Fold versus the more natural feel. This is a big comparison, especially in ultra wide, where you capture more real estate in many of these photos on the Y axis. And as I said in the full iPhone review in the definitive Galaxy Fold review, I prefer the ultra wide angles of the Galaxy series better. However, notice the selfie cameras are flipped on the Samsung phones. And I love the 11 Pro Max's selfie camera. But again, color saturations. On the right, it looks more natural for photo enthusiasts who want the raw data to edit their photos on their own. I think you'll prefer the Pro Max. But for those with the Fold who just want to snap photos and send them and get this artificial beauty, that's always where the Galaxy lies. Now, this one, you can see brighter lights coming in at this Dochi Mochi Donuts. Um, as you see here in food details and colors, the Galaxy Fold is using the Samsung AI Assist, and at the time, Apple did not release their deep fusion analysis. But you can tell here that this, there's a light silhouette I've seen on the Galaxy Fold versus the Pro Max, and the kind of the concentration of the green on these caps really pop and the oranges here. Now let's take a look at this next one. Food. Food is actually an item that's in the fold. Again, there's no UI yet on the 11 Pro Max for their Deep Fusion series. The tacos on the left just look more tasty, but on the right is literally how it looked. As we get closer to some of these details and close up, pay close attention as we zoom in. You can see on these posters, you get this nice orange kind of tones to them, and it looks more natural on the right. So usually anything orange is where the galaxy leads. And I have to think, I was there, and what did it actually look like, look like to my two eyes? You can see that both of them render the photos very well. Fallout 4, it's big, big hit as we get to the shininess and the ultra wide on these VGA trophies. You see it looks shinier and pristine and a little more yellowish on the right for the Pro Max, but low light is where it all shines. Now, which do you prefer to have as your nighttime shooter? 
I think if your subjects are architecture, natural colors, the left looks amazing and vibrant and saturated. However, the right really highlights people. You see the human colors on Joe right there. And now let's go into our video comparisons of the 11 Pro Max and Samsung's flagship, the Fold. So let's start here. We're driving, we're getting all these images. We're gonna switch to the ultra wide angle, but pay close attention to how shaky the camera is. You'll notice the stabilization is excellent on both phones, especially while driving. Now, the selfie camera is again reversed on the Galaxy Fold here, and you can see the sun have this little harshness on my face where it just seems a little more natural. Now, you can see iPhone kind of struggling with the light and the sunlight in the background for it. And let's see how these trees come out. Looks right now a little more fuller on all these colors, especially in the bushes and the berries for the 11 Pro Max. The 11 Pro Max is letting a lot of sunlight in when it doesn't get its shots or adjust, but notice the fold here has a lot more of that sun glare, especially as we walk. You see it as it covers my glasses. Now look how stable both cameras are, and this is a big difference from last year, where the S10 Plus was a lot more stable than the 10s Max. But this is the back cameras of both phones. And in our tests before, those were the front-facing cameras folded and unfolded on the Galaxy Fold. The yellow here shines, but let's go into the ultra-wide. You can see that the scope looks very similar on both of these guys, especially as we walk. I'm running my footsteps, and there's not a shakiness that we've seen before in the iPhone models, which makes this a great shooter. Colors are popping in through the trees and as we go through this park we're gonna come up through the bushes and we're gonna see some uh, wildlife and let's see what captures it notice immediately that the green is a little brighter out there kind of see the grass is a little more tinge yellow um, as we approach this and that's two times telephoto zoom onto this squirrel right there and what do you think looks better in your very few second shot as the sun goes through the trees. I think the right actually looks better here in terms of fuller color, but maybe that's because nature has its reflections look better in yellow light. Now we're testing the front cameras of both of them, and you can see as the lighting is just an excellent environment right now for both cameras, although Let's just say I look a little more yellowish on the 11 Pro Max. But right now, overall, this is a great environment. So it's a hard test, really, for both these cameras to show which one is better. I look a little red on the Galaxy Fold, if I'm honest. But overall, the scene looks brighter. But nighttime is where you start to see the hardest tests on this. And the Galaxy Fold really lets those purple and blue and orange shades go all the way across the bridge versus the 11 Pro Max, it just shows the light and ends it right there. You can see that the pillars, as we zoom out here, the shininess of the pillars shows more on the Galaxy Fold at night, and it's starting to get a little shaky on the Pro Max. And as we two times zoom though, notice all the noise in the Galaxy Fold and the colors. But when you switch to the selfie camera, it's pretty clear that the 11 Pro Max can show more light on my face, whereas you're getting all these reflections of colors on the Galaxy Fold. So I'll leave it up to you guys, what you guys think of who won this battle. As for the phone itself, I can't let go of how good this device is at always being the shooter, the video recorder, the de facto choice. and especially the front facing camera. I've even done videos, YouTube videos that I've posted for new announcements like the Surface Neo and Duo using the selfie front facing camera. The low light camera has taken back the reins. The main camera, arguably, it's more natural and realistic, although some of you commented fairly that it looks a tinge yellow. Wide angle camera, Samsung's is better by real estate. Typing cleaner and more accurate with the final inclusion of swipe, it took us this long, 
but it just works. The stereoscopic speakers, you have to hear it to believe it, it sounds fuller. OLED screens are immersive, beautiful, reliable. Ecosystem, it's still a beautiful, comprehensive prison with iMessage, and iMessage is still better than the wild west of SMS services. So I just want to congratulate my friends on tying the knot, getting engaged, and I want to thank you guys for supporting the channel, and I hope you agree with the discourse here. Feel free to comment below as we reach a thousand subscribers. Thank you so much for supporting, and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.